mostly spoiler free first impressions review guys so watch at your own risk if you don't want something spoiled there's a chance it could happen this video is intended for those who are thinking about dipping their toes in destiny or are coming back again for the first time in a while if you play the game a lot just buy it also a reminder there is limited time champion evan f merch with two designs Keep the link in the description down below. It's some of the best work we've ever done. And remember, we partnered up with Champion. Also, I'm happy to announce that Gamer Subs is free shipping on any order over $30. I know my non-US viewers don't like paying the shipping costs, but this is the best deal you're gonna get. I promise you. Sweatsicle's new flavor even just dropped. It's Cherry Limeade. It's amazing. Use code Evan. You not sure whether to buy the Witch Queen? Not sure if the Big B should take your money again? Not sure if you're ready to be sucked into destiny and go on a mission to abandon your family and friends that may or may not even exist? Well, this video is for you, my friend. Here on this well-established Destiny channel where we have nothing but unbiased opinions, I can fully guarantee you only the correct answers. All those other schmucks don't know what they're talking about, and I am the only one that can make the final call. So, let's see what me, the man with the best ideas, has to say about this DLC by Bungie. It's actually pretty damn good. Destiny has come so far from this old and busted style of the game where everyone would just mash their controllers to skip all the cutscenes. Now I'm at the point where I can tell my friends politely to lower their voices. Bungie knew that if they wanted people back in the masses, they would have to come out swinging and let their big old balls hang down. So they did. Immediately, you were pushed into an unforgettable campaign with some huge story beats I won't spoil for you. There's a good and bad side to this story. The good side is that it's a standalone great experience that rivals most modern day single player story games. And you're telling me this shit has raids and PvP too? This is also the first time I can happily say that the campaign is packed full of some bang for your buck moments. And this is the first time Bungie has put all that lore we hear so much about into the game. Now the bad news about this DLC, it assumes you know a decent amount about the game. You see, in years past of Destiny, the villains were pretty cookie cutter and didn't have much deeper than, ooh, I'm a big spooky bad guy, look at me. So you didn't need to know a lot about them to like their story. Here, if you don't know, <clears throat> the Hive story, the last season story, who Savathun is, who Ikora is, who the Hidden are, the Worms, Megamind, Oryx, Zebu, Kaidal, subscribe to FNF99, 97, the Traveler, Ghost, Guardians, the Scorn, and even more are, and why it's important they're all there. You are definitely, definitely, definitely gonna find yourself lost. The story doesn't pull any punches, and it doesn't waste its time on exposition dumps. The game still has some goofball moments with the ghost just talking and asking questions all the time, but he's clearly meant for people who didn't pay attention to what's going on. Point is, the story is on year eight, and being on year eight, Destiny has established itself so far that I'm happy it's not catering to explaining everything to the player. A catch-up node or a last time on Destiny video would be incredibly helpful to select in-game. I like that you can also replay all the story missions whenever you want to for fun. It helps what we do here on the channel a lot, and I'm sure other people are going to have a blast with this especially you speedrunners. There's different difficulties, including a master one to unlock and a secret cutscene for beating it on Legendary. If I haven't sold you on the campaign because you don't care about the story and you just want to use your weapons, you'll still like this expansion. Grinder, not grinder, somewhere in between her, you'll still like what I have to say. Weapon crafting is dope. For you grinders, you get to level up weapons to unlock more perks and better versions of the perks on the weapons by killing enemies with it, to then unlock better perks and then keep on leveling it, then dumping an insane amount of materials to get the weapons you so desperately want. For you non-grinders, you can still craft a weapon you want with some perks you want to try. It just may take a bit to get it perfected. I love that this system came out not half-baked for now, because my biggest fear was that it was going to be shallow and potentially ruin any sort of long-term commitment to Destiny by giving god rolls for doing almost nothing. But no, this crafting system requires a huge time investment and material investment. Getting everything will take months for even the big-time grinders. 
You could even argue this crafting table is sunsetting the right way by making slightly more desirable rolls to chase and slightly better perks than years before, only available for the new weaponry. You get people moving on using the new stuff and not the same old and busted. You also don't lose any old weapons this year. No sunsetting at all. I just hope that this system can stay as refreshing as it is right now and that there's not some sort of catch later on. But we both know this is destiny and some dude is gonna find some broken glitch and break the crafting table. Something else you can craft on this table is the glaive, which is not busted, but not bad either. It just fits nicely into the weapons we have now. There's some artifact mods to make it pretty good right now, but I can tell you it's not busted. I think the exotic ones can be busted, but we can't use them at the moment, so I couldn't really tell you. The glaive is a special weapon with its own moveset, and it wasn't a huge deal being added. It's different enough that it can fit into Destiny, but it's not must-use material enough that it's all anyone is using. Always gonna be busted though, and now even craftable? Exotics. The exotics fuck in this DLC. You got your poison launcher, you got your rocket launcher, you have your this thing, you got your wave frames, you got your armor, which is great except for that Ark Hunter one. That, that one's tough. Yeah, the exotic team did it again. Everything is super well thought out and quests are better than they ever have been. I don't really have much to say about exotics. We still don't have most of them, so it's hard to say whether exotics will be problems. But they always are in PvP, so that's nothing new. I love, and I mean love, the way some of these exotic quests are. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you get to a certain one. We'll be making a video on that. It's just been crafted so nicely into this trade-off where I actually prefer exotic quests over getting them as random drops nowadays. I never thought I would say that, but this DLC is just full of surprises. This ain't the same Bungie as a few years ago, and you can feel that all the new hires are really crushing it here. Exotic team never disappoints, and they always add some creative ways to smack some aliens. Speaking of something new and a different surprise, we have the Gambit rework, and it's actually really not fun. The goal Bungie wanted for this mode was to have it be a quick invade and boss kill, but they added health gates like crazy, and every person has heavy ammo all the time, which doesn't sound like a problem until you try to invade. I have no issue with the parts leading up to the boss phase, but the boss fight just drags on forever. Bungie might want to consider deleting this mode completely. I'm being serious. That might sound harsh, but I really feel like this has somehow become less fun. Maybe those Gambit Labs will be better, so I'll keep an open mind about it for now, but this mode is just not it, Chief. Something that never gets a rework and is instead always going to be busted is the Crucible, which didn't experience almost any form of love in the Witch Queen. Two returning maps for now, with one new map and some new modes to come in future seasons. It feels like Crucible once again was forgotten about, and I don't like this at all. Yeah, the game is at its best in raids, dungeons, strikes, etc., but the Crucible surely is where everyone takes all those god rolls and puts them to the test against other players. It's where Destiny got its identity, and leverage over other MMO types in the past. It's what originally got me sold on the idea of Destiny when I was younger. So to not have anything new at launch to show for, it's really disappointing. The good news is that Void 3.0 isn't nearly as bad as Stasis was. It'll just take some getting used to. Invis Hunters can be annoying, and the returning maps are at least something new enough that it's refreshing, but a new map would have felt tremendous here, especially with some new modes at launch. I even have an idea for a mode, Bungie. You guys can rip it straight from my mouth to your game. Ghost confirmed, where we have to finish someone's ghost like the Light Hive to get some points. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I know that reworks to Iron Banner and some trials changes are coming, and I know that in time this place will get some love, but it just feels like this should have been here at launch to appreciate the nice cherry on top of the rest of the Witch Queen. There hasn't been a new map since the beginning of Shadowkeep. That is three years, guys. So, yeah, I don't know. Well thought out ideas, though. 
Void 3.0, which is exactly what I love about Destiny. Build crafting, variety in classes, class identity, and just some sicko shit to throw at the aliens, baby. You see this? I just threw a fucking black hole at this dude, and now it's sucking them all in. I know we're eight years into this game, but come on, man, this is, this is amazing. Wake up! I love how Void 3.0 fits into the rest of the game without it being this huge deal in the story either. We just get these abilities off the rip with no grind at all. All you have to do is just Tebow in front of Ikora to get the abilities. I love even more how it's been put into the artifact with things like volatile rounds for detonators from any weapon. Something I've said in the past would be a great idea for an exotic weapon. Can you imagine just a detonator's exotic? I've even heard we're getting an Ark and Solar rework this year too, with more Void Fragments to come after the raid. I love all of this for Destiny so much, as it felt like Stasis was getting ahead of the others in its love. Soon, they're all gonna feel amazing to use. Can't wait for those other changes to come in throughout the year, so we have the final chapter of abilities complete too. Now for the stuff I couldn't get to for this video because it's just not out, we have the raid, which is obviously going to be amazing and inside the pyramid. I think we'll even fight something we're not used to here. We also have the leveling system, which is something I could get to, but it hasn't changed at all, and getting to max level is possible in a few days. So it's a little disappointing, but not surprising here. I know they want a leveling rework in the next year, so I'm very excited to see how that one pans out. Exotic Glaives look to be amazing from the trailers, but we can't use them right now, so we'll just wait and see. Something to note that's very important if you're interested in the game is that Destiny is a game that doesn't play all of its cards for a long while. It waits and week by week delivers a story. So if you're not into that form of storytelling and just want to play, I can still recommend it to you. Just when you do eventually hit the end of the well of content, it'll be time to take a break and get back in it a few months down the road. All right, that's a lot of my thoughts. Now let me wrap up with some closing thoughts on the Witch Queen and give it my verdict for a DLC. So is the Witch Queen worth buying? I don't know. You are the one with the money, but for mine, it's always going to be something since I always cover Destiny and I love this game. But for someone who isn't interested in the game in the past at all, maybe not. This DLC is assuming you are locked into the world Bungie has created and has evolved to fit the player base that loves Destiny. I said in my Forsaken video that Bungie wanted to make a DLC for the players that love Destiny and that resonates throughout the Witch Queen. For those who don't care about Destiny, I think the Witch Queen is at the very least a solid campaign with some great weapons to shoot and turning points in the campaign worth your time. You may not be as tied to the characters the way longtime players were, but you will still have fun. And then there's the rest of the game, which is still very much Destiny. So if you're not into that, maybe borrow the game from a friend or watch a playthrough. For those that play Destiny, you probably already own the game, so yeah, buy it. This feels like the final quarter of the story is unfolding, and it's getting weird and wild. I like when my entertainment gets weird, so this is all going to be a wild ride. And I think I can happily say that Bungie's vision for the end of Destiny is looking beautiful. If I had to give this an egg rating for my first impressions, I'd give it an 11 out of 12 eggs. Anyways, Thanks to all of my patrons for the support. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, be sure to check out my streams and subscribe. Much love and have a wonderful rest of your day.